Spoiler alert, it was a very expensive month. Shopping was also out of hand this month. I did a lot of like pre-Paris shopping because I felt like I didn't have anything in my closet to wear for Paris and that was a really bad idea. I haven't even entertained the idea of buying a house because the real estate here in Vancouver is insane and just out of control. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are doing our June monthly money reset. So we are gonna be reflecting back on the month of May and then planning ahead for the month of June. By the way, if you're new here, hello, my name is Reza. I do videos around personal finances. So if you want to see more of that, then make sure you're subscribed down below. The way that I wanna structure this video is before I get into my budget spreadsheet, I do wanna do a quick introduction about myself because I feel like there are a lot of new faces around here. I wanna do a small section of like questions that I've been getting asked in the comments and then we'll look back into the month of May and do some reflection and then plan for June and at the very end I want to talk about some of the goals that I have set for myself for the upcoming month of June just a little bit about me so that we're all on the same page I work a corporate nine-to-five job I work in the e-commerce industry and I've been in this industry for about eight years now I graduated in 2015 and ever since I stepped out of university, I've always been within this e-commerce space. I feel very grateful because I love what I do and I love the company that I work for. And then I also have a side hustle. I started a stationery and leather goods e-commerce store in 2020 during the pandemic. And I've been building that over the last three years. And then I also have YouTube as a creative pursuit. I am currently not being paid by YouTube at all. I make zero dollars from this creative pursuit. It's just something that I love to do and it is a creative expression and it has been so much fun filming these videos for you guys. So I would say those are my three streams of income, although YouTube is not really paying me anything. The next thing that I'll say is that I split my bills with my partner 50-50, so we split rent, we split our storage unit, our hydro, our home insurance, basically all of the like things that we share, we split almost like 50-50. And the last thing that I'll say is I don't currently have any debt. So you'll see that in my spreadsheet. I'm not paying off debt at the moment. I did pay off my student loans back in 2017 or 2018. Really the only debt I have is my car payment. So I don't consider that as debt, even though I know that it is. I have it under my fixed expenses and I split that with my partner 50-50. So you guys will see that in my budget spreadsheet as well. And yeah, that's all I'll say for now. If you guys have any additional questions, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. Next, I wanted to address some questions that I got asked in my previous video. So I think some of you guys are wondering this and I haven't touched on these in the past. So hopefully this will give you some more insight. The first question is, how do I save up for my retirement? I know that if you guys look at my budget tracker, you don't really see me saving up for my RRSPs. So RRSP in Canada is our retirement savings plan. It is the same as a 401k in the US. And the reason why it's not in my budget spreadsheet is because it is actually taken out automatically by my employer pre-taxes. So every single paycheck, they take out about 6%. At least for my company, I am able to let them know how much of a percentage I want them to take off of my salary every two weeks. And I put 6% down. I think I can go up to 9%. I put down 6% because that is how much my employer will match my contribution. So my employer does do the matching. Um, which is great because it's basically free money. So to answer your question, I do save up for retirement. I do it before the taxes get taken out of my salary. So I do 6% and my employer matches that. And if you want to know how much is in my RSP at the moment, I'm going to link my net worth at 29 video here because I actually tell you the actual number that is currently in my RSP account. While we're on the topic of employer matching, there is another plan that I have with my company. So it's called an ESP, which is an employer employment savings plan. And it's essentially a like savings account that my employer offers and they also match that. So I'm currently contributing 9% to that account and my employer matches, I think, half of that. So again, I talk about that in my net worth at 29 video so you guys can 
watch that as well to see how much I have in that account at the moment. So the RSP and the ESP are the two savings accounts that I have with my employer. And that is something that you guys don't see in the budget tracker because the 6% for my RRSP and the 9% for my ESP gets automatically taken out before I even see the money hit my bank account, which is great. The next question that I got is how do I save up for a vacation slash travel? So as some of you might know, I recently came back from Paris. So the way that I save up for a big vacation like Paris is first of all, I set up a budget. So I budgeted about $4,000 for flights and accommodations for both Paris and Nice. Once I have my budget set up, then I start a sinking fund. So I prioritize putting money into that sinking fund every two weeks. And just depending on how long I have to save up for and when I want my vacation to happen, I would then kind of like reverse engineer how much I need to be allocating into that sinking fund, if that makes sense. To give you an example, my budget for Paris accommodations and flights is about $4,000 and let's say i decide that i want to start a sinking fund on january 1st and my vacation is may 30th i would then count how many bi-weekly paychecks i have from january 1st to may 30th and divide the weeks by four thousand and then whatever that amount is is how much i would be allocating into that sinking fund to reach that goal the next question is kind of similar to how do i save up for vacation but this one is how do i save up for big purchases so i recently turned 30 and i treated myself to a really big purchase and it is this cartier tank louis watch that i love and i have been wearing for ever since i got it so the way that I saved up for this is similar to the vacation and travel. I set up a sinking fund for this watch. I knew I wanted to get this watch for my 30th birthday and essentially I would try to reverse engineer like how much money is coming in and how much do I need to allocate to hit the goal to be able to purchase this watch. Next question that I got is how do I save up for a house? I am currently renting a one bedroom apartment in downtown Vancouver with my partner. My rent is around 2100 and my partner and I split that. So my half is just a little bit over $1,000, which is amazing for Vancouver and the location that we're in. And I feel like we are exactly where we need to be. I haven't even entertained the idea of buying a house because the real estate here in Vancouver is insane and just out of control. So yeah. To answer your question, I am not saving up for a house at the moment. I am very happy with where I am. So I hope that answers some of your questions. If you guys have any other questions, make sure you leave them down below. I'm happy to answer those for you as well. All right, we're finally getting into the budget spreadsheet. I've got my laptop here that I will be referencing. We are gonna be talking about how much money I made this month, how much I spent, how much I saved. Spoiler alert, it was a very expensive month. But yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, getting into my income. This month I made $10,530. I made about $5,700 from my corporate job for the month. And then my side hustle income was 3,100 and then sold a pair of shoes. So this isn't technically income, but I did sell a pair of shoes and that was around $1,700 which totals up to 10,530, which is a really, really good month. I'm so, so grateful. Next, getting into my savings, I always put down $200 bi-weekly into my emergency fund. So this month I contributed $400 and then I also have a birthday sinking fund. So I contributed $686 to that sinking fund. And that is actually the last time that I'm contributing to that sinking fund because my birthday has passed. So total for savings is $1,086. Getting into my investing account. So I use Wealthsimple as my investing platform and typically I put down $200 bi-weekly. And this month I was able to put down $700 getting into my expenses. So things under fixed expenses would be rent, my phone bill, my home insurance, my car payments, um, any like subscriptions that I have fall under fixed expenses. And it's typically around $2,170. And this month I paid $2,187. We're a couple dollars over, but I think it's still in a really good place. And then lastly, my variable expenses. This is where it got dark. I am in the red for so many categories, but I was going through this earlier and it actually like doesn't look that bad. Let's just talk about it. So alcohol and drinks, I'm over around $30. Coffee, I'm over by $20. Eating out, I'm over $160. So it has been quite nice here in Vancouver, sunny and 
We've been going out to the beaches and just spending more time outside. And I think that's what's contributing to this like eating out category being a little bit inflated. And as you can see below groceries, I still have $162 left. So I feel like the eating out and the groceries balance each other out. Next is personal expenses. So as I mentioned, personal expenses is like haircut, manicure, um, pedicure, things like that. I did get a haircut this month and I also did get my nails done before Paris. So I think that's why I'm a little bit over. Shopping was also out of hand this month. I did a lot of like pre Paris shopping because I felt like I didn't have anything in my closet to wear for Paris and that was a really bad idea. I'm over $322.39. Next thing is business expenses. I did not spend a lot of money for my business expenses this month, so I still have $1,200 left. Transportation, I'm over by $32. It says I spent $0 on travel here, but I did create a couple new categories at the bottom here for Paris. I wanted to know exactly how much I spent there, so that's why I created these new categories. Cypher, who is my cat, I'm over by $85. I totally forgot that we had his annual checkup at the vet last month. That is why I'm over. So similar to travel, vacation is at zero, but I did have a like separate Paris section, which I will get to. Next is treat yourself. I spent $413 on new luggage and I do not regret it at all. I will link the video here if you want to see the unboxing of that new luggage. Next is YouTube sponsorships. I pay a content creator to promote my products on YouTube and that is $550. Next is gifts. I went way over for gifts because I had a couple of friends birthdays as well as Mother's Day gifts that I needed to buy. I just didn't budget properly for this category last month. I've also got YouTube expenses. I bought a new hard drive to store my video files so that was really expensive. Next is miscellaneous. I'm I'm so I'm actually really embarrassed about this one. I'm going to give you guys the story time in a different video for why I spent $785, but it has something to do with customs and bringing back luxury goods from Paris back to Vancouver. I essentially had to pay extra because I went way over the allocated budget, but it was totally my fault. It could have been avoided. I'm gonna make a separate video all about the VAT refund and how it all works and what you need to declare when you are coming from Paris back to Canada. Next category is a photo shoot sinking fund. So I have a photo shoot coming up for my side hustle and I am paying a photographer as well as a model. So I'm just saving up for that to make sure that I can pay them. And then the last five categories are Paris related. So as I mentioned, I did split out my Paris expenses because I didn't want them lumped into my everyday expenses because I wanted to see how much I would spend in Paris. So I mentioned in my May financial check-in that I did not really budget for Paris. I didn't want to limit myself and also I've never been to Paris so I wasn't sure how much I wanted to budget. But of course I'm very mindful of what I spent. So for Paris, I did convert some money into euros. Also my boyfriend who was traveling with me took out cash. He took out about $1,500. He paid for a lot of our food there. So you can see here under eating out, I only had $16.30 that I spent. The biggest expense was shopping. So I spent $3,510. I bought two bags in Paris. One is for my mom and one is for myself. So the game plan for transportation while in Paris was to use the metro as much as possible and also use Uber when we have to. So we used Uber to and from the airports as well as to and from the train station. So anytime we had our luggage with us, we would Uber because we didn't want to like lug them around the streets of Paris. But otherwise we used the metro going from the different areas within Paris. So. We spent $609.58 for Paris transportation. Next is Paris sightseeing. So we did some touristy things while we were in Paris. Of course you have to. So we went to the Louvre, which I spent around $25 there. And then the last thing is Paris souvenirs. So of course I had to bring some stuff back for friends and family. And I spent $435.57 on souvenirs. So the grand total for my variable expenses, including everything that I purchased in Paris was $8,821.27. So about half of that is from Paris and I don't regret it at all. I know that this is a really high spending month and I definitely want to chill out in June because I need to pay off my credit cards and just 
recuperate and recover from the previous month. So I'm definitely gonna chill and take it easy for June. Before we get into the June planning, I do want to reflect back on the best purchase that I made for this month. And I would have to say it is the whole luggage situation that I purchased in May. So I purchased a new luggage from Monos as well as their packing cubes and also a Lululemon duffel bag. It's definitely made my travel experience really seamless. So yeah, that was my favorite purchase for the month. And I wanna know down below what your favorite purchases or best purchase is for the month of May. I would love to read them in the comments down below. Okay, getting into the month of June, I would say that nothing is really changing too drastically. So for my income, I'm expecting around $2,000 bi-weekly from my corporate job. And then again, for my side hustle, I'm gonna put $5,000 as my expected income for a total of $9,000. And then in terms of savings, as I mentioned, I no longer have a birthday sinking fund to pay for. So right now I only have an emergency fund, which I put around $200 bi-weekly. And then for investing, this will look a little bit different. I am putting down $500 bi-weekly. This used to be $200 bi-weekly. So the $300 that I allocated initially for my birthday fund over the last couple months, I am now putting into my investments. So instead of spending that money, I want to put that directly into my investing. This is an aggressive number. $500 bi-weekly is very aggressive. And right now this is automatically being taken out every two weeks. So I really don't see that money, but if I feel like it is too much, I might cut down. But I want to aim for $500 bi-weekly for a total of $1,000 at the end of June. And then in terms of my bill payments, nothing has really changed. I've got all of the same categories here. In terms of my variable expenses, I'm gonna flash it up here. It's gonna be this about the same as April, so nothing really has changed in terms of my variable expenses. And then lastly, before I wrap up this video, I did set a couple of financial goals for the month of June that I want to share with you guys. So the very first goal is I will cancel my CIBC debit card. I talked about revamping my whole banking situation in my May financial reset. So I just need to do one more thing, which is cancel my CIBC debit card. And then the second goal is I will be mindful of my discretionary spending this month. Obviously I spent a lot in the month of May and in June, I don't want to necessarily have a like low buy month or call it that because that feels really restrictive to me, but I'm going to say that I will be more mindful of my discretionary spending for this month and really just make sure that the things that I'm buying are things that I need and not because I was influenced to buy them. So the way that I'm gonna be doing this is deleting or ignoring any promotional emails that I get. I get tons and tons of emails every single day from brands and I just want to like not even open those emails and delete or unsubscribe to them. And then the second thing that I'm doing is consuming less content about people showing hauls or like promoting a certain type of product because I probably don't need it. So if I catch myself watching a video like that, I'm just going to exit the app and do something else and not consume that type of content. So if you want to see if I achieve that and if I stuck to my budget, make sure you're subscribed down below. And that's it, that wraps up my June monthly money reset. Thank you so much for joining me and wherever you are, I hope that you're having an amazing day. Bye you guys.